Hebrews 12, verse, verse number 25. Hebrews 12, verse 25. says, See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spoke on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And the word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receive in the kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the Old Testament and the New Testament alike. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord, that you uh, showed for us in the forgiveness of our sins that shed blood on Calvary, God. Lord, we thank you for uh, what we have here today, Lord, and we pray that it's the, the message that you would have for us. Lord, I just pray that you may help me to present it clearly and help it to be understood and that we may be able to apply it to our lives, Lord, to become more Christ-like for your glory. And Lord, I just pray that you may help us today to get a grasp of who you really are and what you have for us, Lord, and pray you may be glorified in all we do. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, man, y'all may be seated. I'm going to move some of this out of the way before I knock it over again. All right. So uh, we're going to be doing some flipping around here in the beginning, so just kind of bear with me. We're just uh, going to a couple places to get some perspective on things, but then we also we got to get context of where we're at here in Hebrews. Uh, go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Should be back just a couple books there. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 4. Verse number 18. And again, this is the, the, the perspective in which, which we're going to look at um, our text today. But we also need to be looking at life with this perspective also. Okay, everything that... Well, we're not going to get into the message yet. Look at verse number 18. It says, While we look not on things which are seen, but at things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen? That's good stuff. There's a lot in that. And that's how we discern the Word of God, right? Amen? We, we, we look at this, we understand that everything that we read, yeah, the, the, these are physical uh, accounts and things, but these physical accounts have spiritual value to them. Amen? That there's a lesson to be learned in there. There's God speaking, and this happened for these reasons, that we may be able to draw this application from this. Amen? So as, as we're looking at this, we're, we're trying to look at things more spiritually. Amen? So if you can, like, see it, smell it, feel it, touch it, that, that's, that's not where we start, right? That, that, that's not what we're looking for, is, and it's not because it's not real. It's just not where we start. Amen? Amen? That's why people lose control. They see things and they freak out, right? But they're not looking at it from where they need to be looking at it from. So, yeah, if you could see it, touch it, smell it, hear it, feel it, whatever, it's not where you start at, right? 2 Corinthians 4.18, again, it says, While we look not at things which are seen, but at things which are not seen, while the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal, right? So when we start with the unseen, that saves us from what I think or how I feel or what I believe about this, right? Because we have a more sure word, amen? It's not about feelings. It's not about thoughts. It's not about what we think. It's about thus saith the Lord and what he has to say about it, amen? Uh, go with me now to Exodus chapter 19. This is going to give us groundwork for where we're at in uh, Hebrews here. Exodus chapter 19, second book of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus chapter 19, and verse number 18. Exodus 19, verse uh, 14, sorry. Says and, and Moses went down from the mount unto the people. Right, this is this is Mount Sinai is where we're at here. Okay, uh, Moses went down from the mount of the people and sanctified the people and washed their clothes and said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come out, uh, uh, not uh, not at your wives 
And it came to pass that on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of a trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Amen. You come to this mountain, it's covered with smoke, there's lightnings, there's thunderings, there's this loud trumpet sound. You guys getting this visual here? And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet God, and they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded, there waxed louder and louder. Moses spake, and God answered him by voice. Amen? Man. And the Lord came down upon the Mount Sinai and on the top of the mountain. The Lord called Moses up to the top of the mountain. Moses went up, and the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the, the Lord to gaze, and the many of them shall perish. Amen? Because you can't see God without dying. Amen? Because you, you can't, we'll, we'll just get into some things here, right? So so we see here that they, um, well, we'll keep going actually. Uh, ver verse 20 is where we're going to continue, at, or chapter 20. Chapter 20, you get the Ten Commandments in the first 17 verses there. But then we're going to pick up here in verse 18 of chapter 20. It says, and all people saw thunderings and lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, speak thou with us. And we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. Amen? This is the terror of the Lord that we was talking about a little bit in Sunday school. This is the power of God that when God descends onto his mountain to talk with Moses, there's this thick smoke, there's lightnings, there's thunderings, there's this loud trumpet of his voice. There's this, the people don't want nothing to do with God. Amen? They want to do with the intercessor. They want to do with the mediator. They want to deal with this man who talks to God, but they don't want to talk to God directly. Amen? And that's the fear of the Lord. That's where we need to get at today is to have that fear of the Lord and understand who God really is. And if you've been paying attention to this past week or two, however long we've been going here with the uh, pastor being gone and me being up here, I'm trying to instill this into us, right? This fear of God, because this is how God's working in me recently is that I need to get rid of this God, right? I need, I need to understand who God is, right? I need to understand with a godly fear who God is and that he is the creator and that he is God of all gods. He's the king of all kings. He's the Lord of all lords. He is the cream of the crop and there is none greater. Amen. Amen. And that, that's where we all need to be. And these people, they understood this because they physically seen this. It says, let not God speak with us lest we die. Verse 20 says, and Moses said unto the people, fear not for God has come to prove you. Amen. The reason why God came is for you. Amen. The reason why you're created is for God. But the reason why God came for you is to prove you and that his fear may be before your faces that ye sin not. Amen. This is why God reveals itself to us, that we may sin not, right? That we may get a, a glimpse of who God is and be like, woe is me. There's God right there. I forgot about God for a minute. I need to get myself back in line, right? Verse 21 says, and the people stood afar off and Moses drew near unto the, uh, yeah, and Moses drew, sorry, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh, thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Amen. That's good stuff. They knew who God was and they feared. Go with me back to Hebrews now. Now that we got that groundwork, we, we can understand where we're at here in Hebrews, right? I'm trying, brother, because it, it's, there, there's a, man, there, this text that we're looking at in Hebrews 12, that you can, like, pastor will probably break this thing apart and we'd be in it for a year, but, I mean, <laughs> there, there's a, a lot here in Hebrews chapter 12, and we're just looking at, well, actually, we're going to go back up a little bit to grasp that same context and then move on down with it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 18 we're not at 25 yet. We're back up at 18. For we are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that the, that burned with fire for unto blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of the trumpet and the voice of the words, which voice they that heard entreated that the words should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure that which was commanded. 
And if so, much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Amen. This is back at Mount Sinai, right? This is condemnation. This is where the, the commandments came in. This is when the world was going to hell in a handbasket. Moses didn't know what to do. And he, God was like, here you go. Here's your law, right? This is Mount Sinai. Verse 22 here. But ye are come to Mount Sion, right? Other parts of the Bible that may be spelled with a Z, Zion, right? But Sinai and Zion, here's the difference. It says, you have come to Mount Zion. This is grace, the, the age of grace, the church age, right? This, this is, it says, and unto a city of a living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and the, with a numerable company of angels. You guys see how spoiled we are here? It says, to the general assembly of the church and to the firstborn which were written in heaven, Jesus Christ, amen, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and the blood sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Amen. What did Abel preach? Repent, sacrifice, repent, sacrifice, repent, sacrifice, right? What did Jesus preach? Repent and be saved. Amen. Repent, accept my sacrifice, and be saved, right? We're not saved by works. We're, we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? So uh, think about this, that when we're, we're talking about acts of God here, right? We looked at Mount Sinai on a couple different occasions. We're, well, actually, let's keep going here. It says, um, Jesus, the mediator, verse 24, the new covenant and the blood sprinkling is speaking better things than that of Abel. That was back in uh, what they was dealing with Mount Sinai there and such. It says, verse 25, see that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escaped, not who refused him that spake on earth, right? That was people at Mount Sinai. Much more than shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving the kingdom cannot be moved. Let us uh, have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Amen. So as we go back to Mount Sinai here, like, like I said, we're, we're talking about things that cannot be replicated or credited to anybody else, right? These are actual thunders and smokes and lightnings and mountains and trumpets that can't nobody explain. And I mean, it's, it's God working, right? It's God. And uh, think about storms today. Like we, we, have the, we have these storms and then who gets all these attentions for these tornadoes and hurricanes and such? It, it's, it's the weatherman, right? Everybody's tuning into the weather. They want to see what their thoughts are, what their perspective is, where things are going to be uh, projected to go to next, what, what we may think about this or when it's going to end. But, again, we can't just take things at face value. Amen? My, my Bible says in Hebrews 12, 25, that uh, refuse not him to speak it, right? Not tune into the weather, man, see where this is going to go next. It says refuse not him to speak it because this has spiritual value to it. Amen? My Bible says that although something's happening physically, there's something eternal at hand, amen, something that's not seen. And we need to listen when God speaks from heaven, amen? And that's going to be what I'm going to beat this horse to death with today with is that we need to listen when God speaks in our lives, amen? The fact that God of heaven cares enough about us, all right? You guys ever seen that, that picture that shows like this is the earth, this is another planet, this is another planet, this is the sun, this is a galaxy this is some mega star this is some other mega mega star and then we're all the way down here on this dot and then we're like an infinitely small decimal point of a dot on that dot but not only did god create this whole world and this whole universe for us right he created it for us right there's no other reason for anything out here except for us right it's to help us sustain life but the fact that he cares enough to correct us, right? To chastise us, to lead us, to guide us, to direct us, to teach us, amen? The fact that he cares enough to speak to us, to have anything to do with us who are sinful creation, right? Who sinned against God, amen? We need to listen, right? I mean, it's God. Uh, 
I'm just put an example here. Uh, you, you parents today know that when you talk to your kids, that doesn't always mean they listen, right? They hear you, but they don't always pay attention. Amen? Amen. Amen. My kids, anyways. And therefore, God has another way of speaking, right? He has another way of speaking. He always starts with his word. Amen? But when you refuse to hear him for heaven, then verse number 27, we, we see that he has... Uh, God has a, a way to shake things up, right? He has a way to disrupt things. He has a way to get your attention. Think about, um, all right, say I stuck my hand in something. I got something on my hand, all right? And I don't want this on my hand, right? I shake it off, amen? I shake it off. And I shake it off because removing those things that are shaken as the things that are made, which to say is peanut butter on my hand because I don't want poop or nut on my hand, as the things that are made, that those things which may remain may not be shaken. Amen? I need to get this off so that this can be used. Amen? So this can be the way that it needs to be. Amen? You guys got that? And, and we're going to use the same concept. Like I said, we're going to beat this horse to death today because I, I, we really need to ingrain this in us that when, when God sees that we're not receiving his word or in his word or that when we don't pay attention and apply messages that he gives us or when we get godly counsel and we don't receive it and we don't use it. Amen? When God reveals to you over and over that what we are doing is wrong and you refuse to hear him that speaks, now he has to shake things up. Amen? Now he shakes things up because he has something to say. You weren't listening to him before. Now something is not right. Verse 25 says, Refuse him, not him that speaketh. And we need to listen. You can't just assume that all this smoke around you and all the, the, uh, around the mountain and these thunderings and these lightnings and the, these trumpets and all these things that are happening in our life, we can't just assume that these are just natural occurrences, right? We have to keep our spiritual goggles on and understand that there, there's spiritual application that needs to be made with all these things. Whether it happens in China, whether it happens in Georgia, whether it happens in my house, there's something that I can draw from that, amen? Because God's speaking. Nobody else can create this, Amen. Too many Christians start in the wrong place today. They start with, oh, this is bad luck, or woe is me, or, and it, it's because we're not in his word, amen? You put yourself on God's throne or, or some other idol to where this doesn't, isn't relevant anymore, right? But if we're in his word, then it's a little bit different. Things happen in our life because something is not right, amen? I don't just walk around shaking my hand, amen? I shake my hand because there's something that needs to come off my hand. Amen? There's something that's not supposed to be there. Not only must we understand that he is talking, you have to understand when he is talking. Amen? No, okay, th this is God speaking, but we have to understand that this is God speaking right now. Amen? And this is God speaking right now. Amen? God has a, a message unto you. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? Unto me. Every time I correct either of my boys, it, it's, it's, it's always the same. I say, do you understand me? Right? You're doing this wrong. I'm going to whoop your butt at, if you do it again. Do you understand me? And if they don't say nothing, I say, do you understand me? Because I want them to acknowledge, yes, I understand you. Because that right there, that, that's signing that covenant with me that if I do this again, something's going to happen, right? That, that's the warning to them. But they understand that if they refuse him that speaks, amen, then it's a little bit different. It's like verse 29, our God is a consuming fire. Amen. If we refuse him that speaks, then it's judgment time. Right. Amen. You guys got that? Because God's only going to put up with our nonsense for so long. But he speaks to us. First, it's through his word. But then it's through some kind of act that's in our life. And then if we ignore that, then it's some kind of judgment that's going to occur. You guys got me? And it's the same every time. So God interrupts our life with things that we ourselves cannot fix. That's how we know it's of God. Amen. We can't do nothing about it. That the things are out of our control, and that's because heaven has something to say. Amen? Refuse not him that speaks from heaven. And his purpose is always the same. Every time. What's God's purpose when he does these things? What was it? Your attention, yes. But what was he trying to get your attention for? To separate. Amen? To come out from among them. To be holy for I am holy. Amen. You're, you're starting to look too much like the world. You're forgetting that this world is temporal. That earth is not our home. That heaven is our home. Amen. That look around how many people are going to hell. Amen. You're getting lost. You're worried about your job. You're getting lost. You're worried about your car. You're getting lost. You're worried about things that do not matter. Right. You need to shake things off of you. You need to get back on track. 
So when he does something to shake our world or the world for that matter, it's because there's a correction that needs to take place. Because our sovereignty of God says that nothing happens without God's say so. Amen? Either he allows it to happen or he causes it to happen. But to say that this has nothing to do with God is saying that God can't control it. Right? And we know that that's a lie. That God is in control of all things. So the fact that something does happen, he either allows it to happen or he causes it to happen. Amen? And it's for his glory each and every time. And it's because something is not right. You got me? All right. So, so what is he trying to correct? Right? Like I said, first attempt is in his word. Second attempt is in his shaking. When God shakes the life of uh, your life or the whole world is to correct the fact that the physical has trumped the spiritual. Amen? Amen. That these temporal has become more than eternal. Uh, Israel, our whole Bible is about Israel, right? They're, they're on fire for God. They start getting lulled to sleep by God's grace. They start worshiping their things and their idols and these statues. God sent, he shakes them up. They ignore God. They go into, um, what's it called? Captivity. They, they, they finally get, that, that's the, the, the consuming fire. They go into captivity. They come back to God. God, we don't like this. And he saves them, right? Because he, he loves them. And then the same thing with Sodom and Gomorrah. The same thing with the rigged elections in America. The same thing with our life. Amen? Some, the message is always the same. Our affections are on temporal. We've forgotten about God. And that needs correction. Amen? Verse number 27, he shakes our lives so that the created things will be shaken off and the things that cannot be shaken remain. The things that should be remain. Amen. The things of God remain, right? Because there's nothing more humbling. There's nothing more that's going to get your attention than God took everything or that not, we won't even say God, well, that everything has been taken from me. I have lost everyone. I have lost everything. All of a sudden, God, help me. Right? God, where you at? I need help. Right? God, like, it's serious. And <laughs> I put this example in here. I don't know if it's the best example, but the application is definitely there. I don't even know if this is the right place for it. But think about vomiting, okay? Everybody's gotten sick in here before, right? Everybody knows what that feels like. You slowly start not feeling well. Your stomach starts to turn. Your face is getting weird. You feel nauseous. Something's not right, right? Next time you feel like vomiting, whether it be spiritually or physically, don't fight it. Amen? Your body or your God is, is telling you that there is a separation that needs to occur. Amen? Amen? That's good stuff. There's application there. There's a correction that needs to happen. That you don't feel good. It don't taste good. But when you hear him that speaketh, amen, and you get rid of what he wants you to get rid of, things are so much better, right? You feel so much better, right? You feel relieved. You feel that load off. You don't feel nauseous no more. You don't feel sick no more. You don't feel not right, right? Every trial and experience has spiritual value. Amen? Including vomiting, apparently, because it's good stuff. That's right. Don't eat your own vomit. Man, pray. God's got some wisdom in Proverbs. Go me Matthew chapter 8. We'll pretend we didn't go with vomiting here. Matthew chapter 8. Well, there's application there, right? A separation needs to happen. Something is not right. Can't be used for God walking around with messed up stomachs. Matthew chapter 8, verse 23. Right, this is, um, Jesus has been doing some good works, preaching to a lot of people. They're going across the Sea of Galilee. Here in verse number 23, it says, uh, and when he was entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. They, they seen the problem, right? They seen the hand of God. They felt the shaking, but instead of looking at the unseen they only saw the storm, right? They only saw the storm. They had God himself on the boat with them. God himself, who 
had already saved, led them to salvation at this point. The God himself, they had witnessed to all these other people. They were with him. They believed that he is God. But all they seen was a storm, right? Jesus let them know that they failed in verse 26 there. He says, oh, ye of little faith, right? Amen. You think that God himself got caught up in a storm that was going to kill everybody? No. It, this storm was, it, I mean, it's obviously controlled or allowed by God. I think it was controlled myself. I think that it was created for this purpose. And it's to show them where their faith was. But the storm, even though it was a physical problem, it had a spiritual purpose, right? It showed them their lack of faith in this matter. It showed them they need to be trusting in God a lot more. Amen? When God starts shaking the boat and allows storms that are outside of your control, then something is out of sync, right? Something is not right. He, he says, I want you to get rid of that so that the spiritual once again trumps the physical. Amen? Amen. So that once again, I'm important. So that once again, the eternal trumps the temporal and that heaven is your home, not earth, right? He wants to ingrain these things in us and whatever trials we are stupidly willing to endure for this purpose, then that's what we're going to bring upon ourselves. And again, not saying that we, we pretend like the, the problem don't exist physically, but we need to look at these physical problems for a spiritual lesson. Amen. Uh, Colossians 3, 2 says, set your affection on things above, not of things on the earth. Matthew 6, 21 says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. God wants your heart. Not a piece of it, not what's left. God wants that very thing that allows you to continue living. He wants that very thing that gives you life. And he wants to take that life and he wants to use it to lead others to Christ and glorify him for sending his only begotten son to die on the cross. Amen. For our sins. Amen. And another example of this whole concept is like you think about funerals, right? They have a way of disturbing like the our our, our natural man, right? We, our, our, our life, it's like out of our control, right? And that, that's what it is, is but the, it's to, one, it, it's out of our control is why it disturbs us, but two, it, it shows us something eternal is at hand, amen? It shows us that there is something other than this. It show, shows us that we may not wake up tomorrow, that we are not in control of this, that God is the creator that God, please help me. I don't want to end up like that. I want to live a longer life. What do I need to do? And he says, come unto me, glorify me. Amen. God calls us things to happen to allow or allows us to God calls us things to happen or allows things to happen to wake us up back to reality, back to him being God, not us. Amen. But if you're not looking for it, if you're not looking for the unseen things, you're going to refuse him that speaketh because you don't even know that it's him that's speaking. Amen? And at that point, like I said, we hear, don't hear him that speaks. And verse number 29 tells us in Hebrews that God is a consuming fire. Amen? You think about the, these weeds and sticks there in your yard, what you do with them? You can't do nothing with them. You throw them in the fire. You get rid of them. So here in Hebrews, back in Hebrews, if you uh, have, if you left or haven't left, God has to explain to Christians that that He is speaking, Amen. And the fact that He has to explain to us that He is speaking, I'm going to say that that's warning number one, right? But let me tell you that this this change that we want to see in the world, this change that we want to see in our country and in, in our life, it, it starts here, Amen. It starts in the church it starts with you me personally amen because it, it if we don't get together and hear and listen and respond when god speaks if we never or it, it, it's just never going to work out there right it's never going to get into our school system it's never going to reach the white house why is god going to work in these big areas if he can't even work here at glory baptist church if he can't work in your pew right now if he can't work when he's knocking on your door when he's speaking to you when he's making things happen in your life to get your attention you repeatedly ignore him if he can't get that to happen why is he going to answer all these other magnificent prayers that you have amen those are just shots in the dark if you don't start listening to god and applying his word to your life and changing to be more conformed to his image then the other prayers that you have they're they're 
I mean, I don't want to say they're a waste of breath, but the chances of that happening when you won't even respect God and listen to God are very minimal. We have, we've been lulled to sleep, like I said in verse number, uh, it didn't tell us we've been lulled to sleep, but as you, it compares Mount Sinai to Mount Zion, we see how much more grace and how much more love and how much more easier we have it than they did. And to me, we've been lulled to sleep, and it tells us that refusing him that speaks is just, I mean, he, he speaks in this physical, right? What we see, but it's spiritual. And God has no problem shaking this physical world. Amen. He's, he's, it, this is his world, his creation. We're his children bought with a price. Amen. We are not our own, but our father, which it, thou art in heaven, needs us to focus. There's no acts of God that are to be ignored. Like I said, if it's in China, if it's in Russia, if it's a, a war between Russia and Ukraine, if it's a, a, a storm down in Florida, if it's a neighbor's house burning down, if it's in your house and it's burning down, then we need to draw attention to that. Amen? Go me to Job 37. Job before Psalms. Esther, Job, Psalms. Go back to Job 37. Save my water. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Yeah. Job 37, verse number three says, He directeth it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. After it a voice roareth, he thundereth with the voice of excellency, and he will not stay them uh, when his voice is heard. God thundereth marvelously with his voice, and great things doeth he, which he, which we cannot comprehend. For he saith to the snow, Be thou on the earth, likewise to the small rain, and to the, the great rain of his strength. He sealeth up the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. Then the beasts into the dens and the, that remain in their places, out of the south cometh a whirlwind and a cold of the north. By the breath of God, frost is given, and by the breath of the waters is straightened. Also by watering, he watereth the thick cloud and scattereth the bright cloud, and it is turned round about by his counsels that it may do whatsoever he commandeth them upon the face of the world. Amen. Sounds like God's in control of a lot, right? Sounds like these thunderings and these lightnings and these rains and these snows and these frosts are all in God's control for it says that he, he uh, whatsoever he commandeth them upon the face of the earth. Verse 13, he causeth it to come whether for correction or for his land or for his mercy. Amen. There's a correction that needs to take place. God uses weather. God uses the world. He uses anything and everything that he wants to for his glory. Amen? Amen. Man, it's a lot of stuff in there. See, God does all things that we might see them. Right? These things don't just happen by fluke accidents. Again, he allows it to happen and he calls it to happen. He wants us to see these things. Right? Because, again, it brings us back to God. It brings us back that Joe Biden didn't send that hurricane. It brings us back that the whoever did not cause this to happen that there is no mother nature regardless they try to give all these personal names like alan katrina harvey uh, nigel whatever although they try to make it personal these are not personal beings there is no mother nature right they're, they, they're not personal but we have a personal god amen and he has a personal problem with what we deem personally important amen it's God whose voice shook the earth. It's God who we refused when he spoke. And now it's God in verse number 13 that causes it to come for correction. Amen. That, that, that storm that's in your life, brother, it, it's rocking your boat because it has a purpose. Amen. Ye of little faith. That's the purpose. It's rocking your life because it has a purpose. Lamentations 340 says, let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord Amen. Amen. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Amen. That's the whole message. Go me to Amos chapter 4. We're going to look at some more weather reports here. <laughs> Amos chapter 4.
Joel Amos Obadiah. Jonah Micah Nahum Becca Zephaniah. <laughs> Amos chapter 4, verse 8 says, So two or three cities wandered unto the one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have smitten you with blasting a mildew and with the gardens of the vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased the palm or devoured them. Yet ye have, or yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have sent among you pestilence and manner of Egypt, your young men have I slain with a sword and have taken away your horses and have made stink of your camps and come unto your nostrils. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have thrown, overthrown some of you, as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and ye were as a firebrand plucked up or plucked out of a burning, yet ye have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Therefore will I do unto thee, O Israel, because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God. Man, you can't say more fearful words to me than that. Amen. So much in that. But the, the fact is, is that God held back rain. They didn't turn to him. He says, I gave you abundance of rain. You didn't turn to me. I took the things that you thought were more important than me, and you still didn't turn to me. Amen? This is rebellion. And then, therefore, prepare to meet the Lord your God. Amen? Judgment is here now, right? I gave you a warning through my word. I shook your life a little bit. You still ignored me. I spoke to you. You still ignore me. Prepare to meet the Lord your God. He gives us chances. He gives us opportunities over and over and over. And just like Israel, we, we miss the message because we, we think it's about our relationship or it's about the rain. No, it's about God. Amen. It's not about the, the what, what is it? What, what's it called? Global warming. It's not about the, the moon tide. It's, it's not about none of this. It's about God. Amen. The, th the things of this world have become too valuable, and as verse set 12 says, prepare to meet the God, your God, the Lord your God. All right, it says uh, the, the problem is we, we miss the message because when we're at church, we're not in church. Amen? The, you, you missed all the warnings. You missed all the lessons. You refused to hear him that spoke from heaven. Amen? You're not in his word. You're not in your prayer life like you should be. You're not praying for the right things. Amen? Amen? You can pray for the wrong things all the time. And then when God judges, all of a sudden we're spiritual again, right? Please pray for me. Pray for me. Thing is, you weren't praying before, right? You weren't acknowledging God before. You weren't listening to God before. When he spoke, you refused him. When he shook you, you refused him. And now you're in judgment and God's chastising you. And now all of a sudden pray for you, right? No. The thing is, yes, I'll pray for you, but the thing is, is that God, he warns us before he punishes us. He warns us before he judges us. He gives us his word. He allows us to pray to him through Jesus Christ. Amen. He gives us all these things, and we are worried about fill in the blank. But storms happen, arguments and marriages happen, problems at work arise, but these things should bring our attention to him. Amen. Our physical problems are because we have spiritual needs and our spiritual needs needs be more important. Amen? When God looks from heaven and doesn't see what he should see, he notices that correction needs to happen. These things get uncomfortable for a minute. These things, they, they start shaking for a minute because God from heaven, the creator of you and me, and all that has ever existed is not sitting in your life where he should be sitting. It's the same thing every time. We need to separate, right? God is not an option. Jesus didn't say, I am a way. He says, I am the way. Amen. Amen. No man, no matter who you are, come to the Father, but by me. Amen. God gave us one way. Amen. And you, you folks that don't know your Savior, you people that don't understand who Jesus Christ is, he, he, I know he is shaking and bringing that conviction right now that you need to listen to that Holy Spirit. Amen. That God of heaven, whose voice shook the earth and is reaching out with grace and mercy. Amen. He has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He lived a perfect sinless life for, uh, to, for his death to be accepted in place of our eternal punishment. 
He was betrayed, beaten, whipped, spit upon, crowned of thorns, placed into his head, and he was hung on a cross, not for sins that he had committed, but for yours and mine. Amen. The holy God of Israel loved the world so much. He loved you so much. He loved me so much that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. You guys ever gave your son for anything? You guys ever gave your son for somebody who stole from you? You guys ever gave your son for somebody that killed your neighbor? You guys ever gave your son for anything? Gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. I praise God that, that he's seen a correction needed to take place. Amen. I praise God for loving me so much that he was willing to shake the world when he sent his only begotten son. Amen. That literally, and uh, let's go there. Matthew 27. Matthew 27. This, this is, yeah, this is good right here. Matthew 27. Praise God for shaking the world. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Man, I need to get there faster. Matthew 27, verse number 50. So at this point, Jesus is hung on the cross. Like right now, he's literally on the cross. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil in the temple was rent in twain from top and bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened. So many bodies of the saints which slept arose, praise God, and came out from the graves after his resurrection and went to the holy city and appeared unto many. Now when the, oh, let's stop right there. Man, so much in that. And these are things that people could have seen and just been like, wow. But, I mean, they're obvious acts of God, right? And God sent, well, let's just keep going, man. All right. Verse 54. Now, when the centurion, all right, this is the man who is standing beside the cross, that nobody can come up and take him down. This is the man to make sure that he is dead, right? This is man to make sure that nothing interferes with it. When the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly saying, truly, this was the son of God. Amen. Amen. And we need to be doing the same thing. When we see the earth quake greatly, when we see that this veil is ripped and the earth did quake and we see dead saints arise just as we will in the latter days. Amen. We need to bring this glory to God because we are all destined for hell unless we have Jesus Christ, unless we believe in this. Amen. God sent his son because there was a correction that needed to happen because without Christ, we were all destined to hell and our righteousness are as filthy rags. But God ripped the veil. Amen. The earth did quake. The dead saints did raise just as we will in the later days. And this was to prove, as the centurion said in verse 54, that truly this was the son of God. Amen. The centurion seemed that which was not visible. Amen. He could have freaked out from the storm and went and took shelter. But as this earth is quaking, as these storms are happening, as these, th these things are going on, he's bowing before God. Amen. Truly, this was the son of God. Amen. He's getting right with God. He's confessing. He, he's confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. He's seen the unseen and he saw God shake the world. He responded to him that spoke from heaven and he received as it says here in our text in Hebrews 20 or 12, verse number. I think it's 28. He received the kingdom which cannot be moved. Amen. Hebrews 12, number 28. Wherefore, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. This is after the things which are shaken are shaken off and that which cannot be shaken remain. Wherefore, we receiving the kingdom of God which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Amen. For our God is a consuming fire. Amen. Imagine if that centurion would have walked away that day and be like, man, that was a crazy earthquake. That was a weird, convenient time for all of that to happen. Right? Man, the sky got dark. These dead people rose up out of the ground. I can't explain that, but man, that was a crazy day. No. He's seen an act of God, and he said, truly, this was a son of God. He repented. He got right. He felt that shaking. Amen? And God got his attention, and he's saved. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word, God. We thank you for your mercy and for your grace. Lord, we thank you for the evidence that's all around us through creation and through our lives, ourselves, Lord, and our existence, Lord, that there is no other way that we could be without you, Lord. We thank you for your mercy that you have to allow us to continue to be. 
Lord, thank you for thinking so much of us, Lord, that you're willing to chastise us and to correct us, Lord, and when we go astray, Lord, that we may be reeled back to you, Lord, to be back on track and be more conformed to your image, Lord, that we may be able to help lead others to Christ and that your uh, son's death may not go in vain, Lord, but they all may be redeemed. God, I pray that you may work in us, Lord, and help us to understand these truths. Help us to respect you with a godly fear and understand that we are indebted to you, Lord, the God Almighty, not the banks, not the landlords, Lord, but to God himself, Lord. Help us to understand that we are bought with a price and we are in debt to you, Lord, and that we need to serve you as servants, God, for you have called us, for you have led us, Lord. And God, I just pray that we may be good ministers for the work that you've called us to, Lord, and I pray that you may be glorified in our lives.